Hello Jigs and Ghouls, you know what time is it? It is Cradle Time. Let's talk Dreadguard. And excuse me for the sexy voice of mine. Uh, you see, last week uh, I've got this very sexy voice uh, all uh, last week. And some days I uh, was also hotter than I used to be because, you know, I got the 2022 bug and I'm still recovering. Um, <laughs> that's why this review is late. It's not a fun uh, experience, guys, but uh, I think I'm good. So let's get to Dreadgod, book 11 in the Cradle series, the penultimate book in the series, because book 12 will be the end. And, uh, you know, it's kind of weird to review this book, because if you've read any... If, you have, if you're watching this and you haven't read any of the Cradle books, yeah, it's still good. Read the series. If you are reading one of the previous books and you are thinking... Should I read this one too? And you want to watch a review? Uh, dude, just read it. <laughs> so now that um, all the people who have read Red God are left and my view retention is extremely low, um, let's talk about this book. And yes, there will be a lot of spoilers. There's no way in there is no way in hell I won't do a lot of spoilers because, yep, this uh, book has left me in a weird spot because uh, half the time I was like, yes, 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 go for it, it's perfect. And the other half of the time I was like, uh, you yeah, right, uh, uh, I don't get it, why I'm reading this? Uh, so yes, there was this flip-flop and I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, because the way I say it, it's not a book, it's not a complete book. It's uh, the first part of the finale. So this is why it's probably um, set up this way. I mean, most of the revelations have already happened. And in Reaper we had a couple of big ones. Uh, we learned that um, it is the monarchs remaining on Cradle that creates the Dread Gods, and the only way to get rid of the Dread Gods is to get rid of the monarchs, which is easier to have done because, yes, this is a, these people are super powerful and they're also very wise. So they have experience of eons, of uh, centuries, or millennia on their backs, and it's very hard to deal with them. And also, we learned that Ethan, that annoying jerk we used to love, is actually, he was actually Osril in disguise, and he's ascending the heavens. <laughs> so there's not enough Ethan in this book, so that already costs it uh, six stars. So the book starts on a minus one star rating, because no Ethan, and has to, you know, has to match the other books. <laughs> So that's a bit of a problem. Uh, there is some Ethan, though. I mean, there is Ethan in the heavens, and he's now Osriel, the Reaper, the uh, Abidan, the Judge, who is responsible for killing planets and stopping the corruption creates. Um, but his experience in Cradle has changed him. He is uh, teaching Lyndon, and Yerin has taught him a lot, and it, it has humanized him a little, it made him softer because he went back to Cradle to... There, is, there, there was this anecdote early in the series, uh, I think it was on book 2 or book 3, where they say that uh, Aidan was supposed to train uh, a whole class of uh, Aurelius students and he either killed or ruined them all because of his training. Uh, so that was the old Osriel. Uh, and the Osriel we get now is closer to Aiden, closer to what we learn in those books. So that's quite an interesting change of pace, and I believe there will be a sequel with the adventures of Aiden. I'm looking forward to reading this one too. The rest of the book is about our heroes being apart and trying to advance so they can deal with the Dread Gods. I mean, there is Lyndon who is unable to tell everybody that yes, we have destroyed the monarchs to save the world from Dread Gods because of the oath he took to uh, Malice. 
and um, he is in the labyrinth and he's making plans and he's trying to find ways to become stronger and then uh, the Dread Gods are on the loose and they're very powerful and the Monarchs can barely deal with them. So early on, as Lyndon is making plans, he has to go and fight uh, one of the Monarchs, the Silent King, who is supposed to be the weaker of the four, the physically weaker of the four, and he actually does manage to piss uh, the Silent King so much that uh, he gains his attention and uh, the Silent King, the, a white tiger dread god who is able to mind control people makes a promise that I will um, take over everybody you love and care for. So Lyndon being Lyndon he goes paranoid and he makes counter plans to save his people, his family and his friends and um, at the same time Yerin has to go and be a disciple for the Red Faith Sage, who is a dreadful cultist uh, and really hates this, uh, this cult, his cult's gods. Um, but she has to go there in order to become stronger, maybe become a monarch or a full herald, or you know, maybe um, slay some of the cultists and steal their power. So yeah, but even on that cult, there is a lot of uh, mayhem, there's a lot of infighting that it's not just, you know, politics at some point, all hell breaks loose, because the Dread Gods are active, everything is going to hell in, on Cradle. Orthos and Zeal are sent to some ruins to find a dread, um, dragon remnant and yeah also that's not going very well they have a lot of misadventures and Zeal is a character I do like because he's stoic and very broken in tr but trying to fix himself and that's always a positive uh, part of it and Orthos of course is Orthos uh, meanwhile Lyndon has to deal with Mercy, with um, Malice, who is keeping her daughter Mercy away from the rest of the group and under her control. And she's a master manipulator. At some point, uh, Lyndon even blurts out the secret to somebody he assumes knew about it to uh, Malice's daughter, the Silverheart Sage. And uh, this creates a whole. Um, cascade of events on that front and they have to fight against the silent titan one of the dread gods the dread god who destroyed the sacred valley in book nine and malice can barely keep up with him lindon and uh, the sacred heart and uh, the rest of the akura clan try to deal with him and as he is uh, hit and he's injured he swaps places with the Sun King, who takes over half the city of the Akira clan and things go very wrong for everybody. Um, however, uh, Lyndon and Drosh come with a plan and uh, they manage to hurt the Sun King. They go into hand-to-hand -hand combat with him and when he's weakened, with the help of Malice, along with uh, another monarch, the blood monarch, I cannot recall her name right now, who is very sympathetic to Lyndon, uh, they managed to hit the Sun King very hard and Lyndon finishes him off and that results in three things. First of all, every other dread god becomes even stronger. Two, the monarchs are pissed with Lyndon. And three, Lyndon does become a dread god himself because he has the arm of the original, the patient zero, the uh, subject one, subject zero, sorry, or subject one, the original dread god, nevertheless, one of the experiments that uh, Osriel made in the past. After this happens, and this happens uh, two thirds of the book, so it's everything is epic up to this point, but when you hit the peak. You have to go even higher in a book, and we don't. We actually go into a long uh, segue of events happening that lead to the end of the book. Uh, that's why I say that this book is not a complete book, it's more like a half of the finale. 
so it's more like we're in the second, uh, in the first uh, half of it, and that's why I was like, oh, why am I reading this? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Where is this going? And that's it. That's because we go into some. Um, the team coming up with stealing treasure from other monarchs and preparing to create a Dragon Ball like um, time capsule so they can go out of time and train on their own and ad advance and come back to destroy the monarchs who they won't destroy Linden, of course. So, a lot of things are happening in this book and it's a great setup for what's coming next. Uh, definitely looking forward to read the. Um, next book i think it was an excellent fun uh, throughout it had some um parts though that i don't enjoy the much uh, it kind of lacked the feeling of you know be of having the team together the inter interactions their downtime uh, all those fun stuff from the pre previous book that made the previous books so much enjoyable i lacked this part uh, for the most part the team was uh, not together, there were a lot of epic fights and political uh, intrigue and these are two things I do enjoy about Cradle. There were some more arcs, uh, some side arcs progressing like, um, I mean, Zai Long, uh, uh, they hurt my boy Zai Long. <laughs> which is not that uh, something I enjoyed and um, you know what there are a lot of points in this book where uh, people warn Lyndon that you advanced way too fast and that's not the way to go and I feel that uh, this book does advance too fast or maybe has to deal with the consequences of advancing too fast because uh, we reach the peak and it's become even more epic and uh, we see a lot of uh, insane action, big battles and you have to enjoy but at the same time it feels like all those fond memories, all those fond uh, parts of going there and the relationships built and uh, the friendships gains and uh, the enmities, the bridges that were burned and are being gapped again they were too short it was like an advancement throughout the book and um, a mad jog and sometimes advancing is not what is satisfactory it's staying a while and enjoying life and that's something that this book definitely missed for me so that's why i'm not enthused but i do understand it's the penultimate book and the world's coming apart, so yeah, uh, everything is urgent and nothing is normal anymore. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading the next book. Um, I don't, I won't, don't want to say that this is my favorite little book. I'll probably rank it uh, on my uh, bottom third tier in the books, but I do really have to read the ending because I feel like that this book is half of it without the next book. Uh, what was your opinion about Cradle? Did you like Dreadgood or not? Leave a comment below and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.